What is life like after being in prison for close to two decades? And then also falling in love in prison and getting married. Joining me now is Damian Nichols, known as one of the West Memphis Three, who met his wife, Lori, while he was on death row. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. For and as I said, us. listen, I'm all about transparency. You took issue to the story. You did not like being compared to some of the people who found love, so to speak, behind bars, right? I certainly did. Good. Um, Why not? I, because I'm, I'm not a woman who fell in love with a murderer. I'm a woman who is educated, who educated herself about a case about an innocent man. And yes, we did fall in love and we married. I worked on his case for 16 years. Mm -hmm. I worked with the legal team. It, it's a completely different, I don't associate myself with, with, with anyone else. Mm -hmm. Whatever anyone else is their business, but I don't want to be associated with. And I understand, <laughs> you, want, and you want to be in charge of how your story is told, exactly. as any of us would want to. Exactly. I would want the same thing, and that's part of what you're doing in this book. Do you want to respond to that before we move on and talk about the book? Um, yeah, I just, you know, I'm, for me, I've been called just about everything a human being can be called at one point or another, so things like that don't get to me as much. Mm -hmm. But it's like, you know, you always want to protect the people you love, your loved ones, the people you care about. So it, it hurts me whenever Lori is hurt, whenever she has to, you know, deal with things like that. Yeah. 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 Well, listen, I, we didn't mean to hurt anyone, so I po we apologize for that. But let's, Thanks. on a more positive note, yes. right? What was it like to to have someone like her, I mean, she's gorgeous, falling in love with you, you, th you th thought your life was over. She went to and saw you in a documentary, a film about you, yes. wrote you a letter, yes. and you responded. She couldn't believe it, and then you guys started uh, communicating by letter and then eventually by phone, and then you met and mm -hmm. whatever. What was that like? You know, from the very beginning, from the very first letters I received from Lori, I, I knew this was someone completely and absolutely unlike anyone I'd ever known before. You know, I'd, been, I'd received letters from people all over the world because of the documentaries about the case and everything else. But Lori had a way of uh, seeing things that most people wouldn't think anything about, just everyday mundane things. But she would see them in a way or describe them in a way that made them seem almost magical. And it would make me want to see the world the way she saw the world. It sort of made me want to be a little bit more like her. Mm -hmm. And no one had ever done that. I had never felt that way with anyone before. And I think we fell in love really quickly and the relationship progressed very rapidly. What made you believe him? Was it that first letter, if, if I recall right, I think it was in the first letter where you said, uh, I think he wrote, there ha I knew from the very beginning that there had to be something bigger, something good to come out of all of this. Is that when you felt that he was not guilty of what he well, was accused no, of? Well, I, no, I saw Paradise Lost in 1996, when the first documentary made about the case. And from that, from that film, you can take away that there's been an injustice, definitely has happened. You don't get the whole story, but I took the time to go to the library. The internet was fledgling at the time. So I went to the library, I researched the case, I went through microfiche, I, I did everything I could. Microfiche, my gosh. <laughs> I did. I you're, did. you're dating yourself now. <laughs> yes, that's, it's 1996. Right. So I found out everything I could about the case and read the first appeal that was filed. So I knew, I knew a lot about the case going into it. As as much as, as was available at the yeah. time. So I knew enough to know that, that yes, I believed that he was innocent. You guys finally met. I mean, you, you ended up moving, right, down south. Uh, you quit your job here in New York City as a landscape architect, correct? Yes. You were making great money, and you said you were making, I think you said a quarter of what you were making in New York City, but you wanted to be close to him. And you moved down, and then two years later, you eventually married. You guys had never touched. You were speaking through glass. Mm -hmm. And then you, the first time you touched was what? Our wedding ceremony. Your wedding ceremony. Right. Yeah. Now here's a, everyone has, everyone is that, did you consummate your marriage then or when you got out? No, um, the whole time you're in prison, we weren't even allowed to touch for the first four years together. After we were married, we were allowed to sit in the same room together, but that's it. We still, you know, you have prison guards around you all the time watching you constantly. <laughs> um, but at least we were allowed to be together. After well, anybody, I have to say, if you don't believe that's love, <laughs> that, <laughs> that uh, is love. To, and to stick with someone for that long and the little things that we take for granted, like, you know, being able to speak to someone on the phone at will, see them at will, and even sleeping in the same bed, we take those things for granted. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Um, thank you. This It's called A Love Story on Death Row, Yours for Eternity, and it's by Damon and Damien and Lori Eccles Davis. Damien Eccles, Lori Davis. Thank you. It's a beautiful book. Thank you. I so appreciate you. it. I love reading some of the letters. Thank you. Thank True you. love story. Appreciate Thank you guys. You.